unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word.
Tell him God to reign. He reigns. He reigns. He will work the Almighty. 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 We give you all our praise. We give you all the power. We give you all the power. We give you all the power. Cause you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy.
That walked on water and opened the eyes of the blind and the deaf. That same man that raised Lazarus' daughter, the kinsman redeemer, the Alpha and the Omega, the present and the future. That great I am. The Bible says, as he is, hey, so are you. What a glory. What a blessing. What an eternal truth. So beyond. Somebody speaking other tongues. Ricarato Romo Ziba Randi. Sata Carra Costa Rada. Sanderere Bosala Ramande. Sarane Costa la 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 Seremando robos, riba socorra la 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 la, ribo simando robos, sarremondi cosa la la, brazo la la, sirrebos.
Have you ever thought of a day when you messed up so bad and it looked as though there is nothing in this world that can get you up? And then he got you out. Have you ever suffered something so great that you get to a point and say, maybe this will never change. And he still comes through. Do, do I have a witness? You know, some of you were born so perfect. You, you were born in milk and honey. You grew up with silver spoons. You rode in limousines and lived in mansions. But some of us come from far. That if you took us back, we would die. Do, do I have a witness. Hey! Remember those words that were spoken upon your life by them that hated you and wanted your life so badly. Who were more comfortable seeing you in the coffin six feet under than walk in the face of the earth. And the Lord could not let them see your death. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah! seemed so strong that you knew the scripture that greater was he that was in you than the he that is in the world but your enemy appeared so strong and the Lord avenged you you move now John chapter 12, verses 32. Let me begin from 31. The Bible says, now this is the judgment of the world. Somebody say, this is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And he says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Somebody say, amen. amen. He said, if I, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Somebody say amen. He said, if I be lifted up. He said, I will draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Somebody say amen. If I be lifted up. If I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. Praise God. I'm going to begin even from a more interesting perspective of looking at this. In Zechariah, 
the 12th chapter, the man of God introduces that page of life with a burden of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. He understands that every word that is revealed from God comes with a burden because it is responsibility. Of course, many of you read the scripture and have read before that to whom much is given, much is required. The word of God comes to us as a burden and as a responsibility. That is why one prophet says, I held up the word of God and refused to say it and it was like a fire in my bones. It kept burning me up. Why? Because everything revealed to you carries a responsibility. Somebody say amen. And the responsibility even to the rule God has given you to reach as unto many people in this world. Somebody say amen. amen. Everything the Lord reveals to you through his word comes responsibility. And to the degree the Lord has revealed himself to you is to the degree you're without excuse. Because he requires much to the man to whom has been revealed much. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Shout hallelujah again. Hallelujah. And that is why he says a man cannot have fire in his bosom and his clothes not burn. That is the influence of the word of God in your spirit. When it hits you, even your clothes have an influence. Somebody shout hallelujah. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon you, even your clothes have a what? Have an influence. They have their unextending influence of the anointing operating upon your life. And everything of yours. Somebody say amen. That is why when Satan is talking about the testimony of Job, he says, have you not... Put a hedge on him and everything that he has. Oh! He says, have you not put a hedge on him and everything that he has? In other the devil knew that when God puts a hedge on your life, even the chair that you own, I don't know that you understand what I'm saying, even the shoe that you have, even your comb, that the life of God extends to everything you have. That is why when you understand that, you cannot really be robbed. Did you get what I just said? It doesn't mean that they might not take, but you cannot be robbed. When you have that understanding, you don't worry because they stole your phone. <laughs> he said all things are ooh, yours. He extended it when you became born again. The new creature, he didn't say you have, no, he says all things are yours. All things are yours. All things are yours. And the Bible says, and you are Christ's. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody say, everything I own is hedged in. It cannot be taken by the devil. So why do people go to the enemy's camp to take back what the devil stole? <laughs> As for me and my house, he maintains my lot. The Bible says the Lord is the portion of my cup. And he maintains my lot. He keeps it guarded constantly. Oh, that person took my man. Oh, no. They can't take yours. If he's taken, he's not yours. Yours cannot be taken. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? Oh, that guy took my wife. That woman was supposed to be my wife. But some guy, no. Maybe they can take yours. Yours they can what? But there are people who know who they are. Somebody said the Lord is the person of my inheritance. And of my cup. And he maintains my lot. To the minutest detail. Even the pen in my house. It is maintained. Hey! He maintains my lot. He maintains my lot. If he goes missing, except if the devil wants to bring back seven times. Because it's also scripture. Somebody shout hallelujah. But he maintains my lot. Because the word of God in my spirit carries an extension of everything that I own. And everything that I own has my anointing on it. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Everything that I own has my what? My anointing on it. Even my name. You can claim it. You can refuse to claim it. It's up to you. Praise the Lord. I will not struggle with someone who won't believe it. But I believe it. Do you believe it? Yes. 
Yes, yes. Now, Zechariah said that I carried the burden of the word of the Lord of Israel. He carried the burden of the word. And I said, if it's a burden, then there is a lot to carry. A lot to carry of the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, you're not yet connecting? If I be lifted up and the burden be carried, take me ye of my yoke, for my yoke is light. Of course, it's a yoke, but it is lighter. If I be lifted... See, okay, when you go back to Zechariah chapter 12, the verses 1, give me the amplified of that. He said, the burden of oracle, listen, and I'm going to stretch something here. The thing to be lifted up of the word of the Lord concerning Israel. Okay? In other words, it, the, every burden is lifted. But even deeper, Zechariah says that there is a thing of the word of God which is to be lifted up. And there are things in the word of God, even though they are the entirety of the word of God, they ought not to be lifted up. Oh, did you get me? He says the thing to be lifted up of the word of the Lord concerning Israel. In other words, even in its entirety as a revelation of Jesus... There is a thing to be carried, to be lifted. Okay, this is what I'm saying. The word of God is relevant from beginning to the end. But there are portions in the word of God that ought to be lifted. Those are the parts that Christ says, if I... That means if you go in the entirety of the word and lift me up, if you can see me revealed in scripture and lift the part of me revealed in scripture, I will draw men to myself. Not everything in scripture lifts the Christ. Unless you understand the full context of its revelation. In light to what the Lord has revealed to you. So yes, it is a burden. But there is a thing to be lifted of the word of the Lord. And he is the word that became flesh Dwelt among men, we beheld his only glory as the only true son of God, full of grace and truth. How many of you know that? The word of God is important from beginning to the end. But not all the word of God is applicable in this dispensation. One time I gave an example of circumcision. We don't circumcise children at eight years according to the law of Moses. But at the time circumcision was relevant. You see what I'm saying? There are many things that are relevant. The Leviticus even used to tell us how we should shave our beards. Some of you are not keeping them biblically. When I look around, your beards are not kept in the Levitical order. (laughs) Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why some people are still stuck there. They have problems. Oh, women should not put on trousers. What? You understand? Oh, this, uh, they shouldn't put on. Don't do your hair. This is so, so seen. Then if you do this, it is so, so seen. Some of you, they don't even do makeup. They, they, everything has to be natural for them to be holy. <laughs> Tell somebody, they are not talking about me. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm not saying they are for dress the way you want. Ah. Praise God. It's maturity to know the word of God says, For I shall not do a thing that causes my brethren to stumble. Praise the Lord Jesus. That causes my brethren. Okay, common sense. When you look at yourself, what you've put on, does it stumble? Make it longer. Of course, some of your revelation of stumbling is relative. (laughs) Because somebody can have something up to you and they say, Yeesh. What is stumbling about this apostle? (laughs) Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So yes, there is a part of the scripture, a part of the word of God that we ought to lift, which reveals Christ. In other words, lift the part in scripture that reveals the Christ. That is the burden of the Lord. That is the will of the Father. That is the purpose of the word of God. To reveal Christ. From beginning and the end. He is the word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Everything in the scripture points to him, but only that which reveals him to you, the individual. Because there are people who read the Bible, but they don't see those things. There are things that seem like they're hid in the Bible. They're there, but they look like they're what? They're hid. Beyond some people's ability to scrutinize and weigh and, and, and conceive. And that is why if, if you have to seek God, seek Him for revelation. Seek Him for revelation. The Spirit. The Spirit. How do you get it? How do you walk in the Spirit of revelation? Very simple. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Not by hearing the word, but hearing by the word. By the word, you start to hear. He starts to explain to you the things that you read. To put them in context of instruction. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. If there is the one thing God has told you kills the church, which is knowledge. Does it shock you why people don't seek knowledge anymore? Does it surprise you that people don't pay the price of knowledge anymore? People are held up in this small box of nothingness and limitation, even in knowledge. And Christians, when he said that we are the heads and not the tail, he meant it. And how can we be heads and not the tail if we are not the most enlightened, if we are not the wisest thereof, he has become our wisdom, our redemption, and our sanctification. In him are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You cannot know the Christ and not walk in full knowledge and wisdom because that is the stability of thine times, the Bible says, and the strength of your salvation. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you know how far off we have drifted from truth because of the deception and ignorance that is within us. A Christian wakes up every day and they are dealing with a generational sin. They are trying to break something off that will never leave them. I refuse. I break. I break. I b- You've broken for one year. You've broken for two years. You've broken for three years. You've broken for four years. Five years. Six. Twenty. Some of you, even your voice has become a bit coarse. You can threaten and come off like an intercessor. I've been praying for a hundred days. <laughs> but ignorance is killing your voice. I'm not saying that there is no place for prayer. No, I believe in prayer hundred and percent and more. I believe in rebuking spirits if they are existing or if they are working in the life of an individual. But I don't believe in that ever constant life of rebuking things that never live. No, go maybe into a began. You are dealing with things every week of your life and every hour of your life until you even in sleep they find you rebuking. I rebuke. I... <laughs> Tell somebody for freedom Christ died. He died for your freedom. Galatians 6. For your freedom. When Jesus died and rose again, he represented your freedom. You were supposed and are supposed to walk this life of salvation a free man. For who saw the Son sets free, he is free indeed. So ultimate question then. How about those ones who are not free? Who is setting them free? No, answer me. If you're living a life of struggle and turmoil and every time you're dealing with devils and these devils cannot let go of you, who is delivering you? Who is setting you free? Somebody took the Lord's place. The Jesus I'm talking about, he says, if I set you free, you are free indeed. What we're dealing with in the church today is that men have taken the place of Jesus and raised their own foundation. He says, for let no foundation be built, save that which is of Jesus. And let you who build, take heed how you build. This is the master builder telling us how the gospel was built. It was patterned for a reason. It's that way. The order of the spirit is very clear. And God has laid down everything that we need to walk the glorious life. Thanks be to God. Who present continuous always causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and he maketh manifest the server of his knowledge. The big noses by us in every place. And no school. He makes. Manifest 
that knowledge, his knowledge by us in every place. In other words, our influence, our sphere of influence is not limited to our geographical location. In every place we are known. Hallelujah, somebody. In every place we are known. We have a written a piece so that it is known and read by all men. But you see, look at the ever-present continuous tense in that scripture. Now, thanks be to God, comma, which causes us to triumph always. Always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. 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 He always causes. He always causes. He always causes. He always causes. Even that thing that looks like it is permanent, it is not Permanent. He always causes. He always causes. And the Bible says, and our trials and sufferings, which are but for a moment, they cannot be compared to the weight of glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. At the revelation of Jesus, there is an eternal weight of glory that comes because it is just a light affliction. I don't care what the doctor called it. Hey. He said, if I be lifted up, the burden and that which of the word of God ought to be lifted. What is ought to be lifted? The mind of God revealed according to what he has purposed for you and I. Let me give you an example. Divine health, not healing. Divine health. I think it's in Exodus, what, 21? The children of Israel are free from Pharaoh, from Egypt, and then they are going through to the promised land. And in the wilderness, they rebel against Moses. You remember that story? And they tell him, oh, you got us from the other side to come here and die from here. We don't even like this food. You want us to die from here? They say, complaining. And the Bible says, <laughs> and the Lord sent out serpents. And these serpents, what? Bite them. And Moses makes a bronze, right? And then he puts it up, the bronze snake, right? And then he puts it up, a serpent made of brass, put it upon the pole. And the Bible says, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, the Bible says he what? He lived. That is every man which beheld it. He lived. Okay? Are you seeing the correlation between if I be lifted up? Because if you go back to the scriptures, this he did signify the crucifixion on the cross. Next verse. Thank you. This, he said, signifying what death he should die. This is the Lord. Verse 32, he says, if I be lifted up, the Bible says, I will draw all men unto me. And 33 said, and this he said, signifying what death he should die. Which is of the what? Of the cross. That everybody that looks at that cross, they're healed. They're healed. They're healed. They're healed. Because they look unto Jesus, crucified. Because the cross represents the wounding for your transgressions, the bruising for your iniquities, the chastisement of your peace. Upon him, and by whose stripes you were healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's the same thing Moses is dealing with. Praise God. So we go back to the scripture. Where he builds this snake of brass, right? And they look at it, and they're healed. Praise the Lord. And then you read history. And then you find Greek mythology. Hermes and Apollo and what? They're also borrowing the same concept. And then you look at the sign of medicine. How many of you know the sign of medicine? It's a serpent on a stick. Have you noticed that? Go Google the, the sign of medicine. Doctors understand what I'm saying. It is a serpent of what? On a stick too. It is lifted up. That when men behold it, they are healed. <laughs> That's the spirit behind medical science. I'm not saying I'm against medicine. Medicine is for people. It's good for people because it's, we don't want to lose you when you're still believing. You get my point? 
It is good. Because somebody can say, oh, I am healed, and then they die. Because they didn't have faith, their mind agreed, but their spirit was not there, and then we lose them. No. Our brother, I keep you on the drugs until we have enough faith to get that virus out of your body. And when we get it out, then you can go and testify. You understand what I'm saying? So it's also there as a provision to look unto. When the full revelation of divine health is... Okay, let me make it easier for you. Do you know that the man which was healed died? He was wounded for that man's transgression. He was bruised for that man's iniquity. The chastisement of that man's peace was upon him. And by whose stripes that man was healed. And when that man was healed, the Christ died. Right? Isn't it? And the Bible says when he died, that man died with him. The old man, the Bible says, has been crucified with Christ. That old man has been crucified with Christ. He went downhill. The new man, which is you and I, he has never known sickness. <laughs> the Bible says the first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is the Lord from above. That is the principle of the Spirit of God. He has begotten you of him. And that man from above comes with the spirit of lordship. That is why Jesus never knew sickness. There was never a story in the history where Mary took him down the steps to one Bathoyas, which was a healer. No. If Jesus did not fall sick and you are the body, <laughs> tell somebody divine health is mine in the name of Jesus. That's why the miracle of the new covenant and the new creature in Christ is divine health, not healing. Of course, sometimes when we're teaching, we say, be healed. But that is for those who have not yet understood, to understand, because some people don't understand that that is past tense. You understand what I'm saying? Healing took place many years ago. That's why First Peter 24 says, by his stripes, ye were healed. But when they're talking about the healed guy, they're talking about the old guy, which died with him. When the new guy came inside you, he never knew, will never know, cannot understand disease. Why? Because the Bible says he is born of an incorruptible seed. How many of you know that sickness is corruption? Oh, how many of you know that sickness is corruption? And the Bible says corruption cannot inherit what? Incorruption. Corruption cannot inherit incorruption. Corruption, sickness is corruption. It cannot inherit in corruption. You get my point? It cannot. It doesn't. Does not. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, there is no way corruption can come to this old new creature and make him sick. That is why I said if you live after the flesh, you will die. What does it mean to live after the flesh? It's to dictate your life against the old nature. He says you will die. He says, but if you buy the spirit, modify the transactions of the body, he says you will live. Do you realize they just don't live by Panado? <laughs> this man is a bit very, very extreme. No. I'm not extreme. I'm just interpreting the Bible. <laughs> Shout hallelujah somebody. He said they just shall live by chloroquine. No, by faith. You wake up in the morning every day and say I'm healthy. Divine health is mine in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what I feel in my back, in my stomach, or my head. Because what the Son of God did is free and it is forever. It is eternal and, and complete. There is nothing that can shake and change this. I am full of the life of the Spirit. And that same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, it lives in the inside of me. Divine health is mine. Divine health is mine. They You have to be shocked to have a headache. Eh? When you feel it, say, hey, what is this? What, what, what is this? But some of you get headache and say, hey, you know it is human. <laughs> you human being. They tell people that you don't forsake. That's true. 
And that one we are not going to apologize about it. <laughs> are you hearing me? We are not going to apologize about it. Because you don't understand the power of life and death. That it is in the tongue. He says life and death are in the power of the tongue. He didn't give uh, death power. He didn't give life power. He gave power to the tongue. Why don't you understand this? He says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And he says and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you love confessing negative mama, no kind of prayer can get you out. But if you love speaking the word of God upon your life, hallelujah, you just wake up in the morning and say, I am healthy. I am strong. I don't fall sick. Don't say can't, because can't, uh -uh, say don't. That, that, that comes with an eternal command in nature. Not to. Hallelujah! I don't fall sick. Some of you, the moment you feel pain, bah, you say, ah, yeah. You go in the drawer. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, you're on drugs. <laughs> Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Which is the author and the finisher. You know, one time I was explaining, somebody asked me, why are you guys too... You, you sound so radical. And I told him, look, I didn't begin it. If I began it, I would have reason to have my control too. Because there is a part of me that is human. But I didn't begin this madness. The Son of God said those things. Listen, you can't open your Bible and read a word like whatsoever you ask when you pray. But now again, what have I done? Whatsoever you ask, how can you not be mad? He says, whatsoever you desire, whatsoever, whatsoever, how can I be no more? How can I? Oh, remandori kasalare korando robo sande ho saya rinda riro rikaseri rante ho rate. He didn't say according to your economy. He didn't say according to your paid job. He didn't say according to your connections. He didn't say according to your networks. He didn't say according to Uganda. Not even the government. He says, whatsoever, Ooh -wee. whatsoever, what do you desire? Some of you, if we cut you a little bit and entered your heart for a moment, oh, the things in you are bigger than us. How can we be normal when he puts such a mad statement in the Bible? How can, how can? You see, some of you have not even envisioned yet. Because when I say whatsoever, somebody thinks 10 million shillings. Some of you, when I say whatsoever, somebody thinks 100 million. 200, 1 billion, a million dollars. 2 billion, 200 billion, 300 million. Oh, 20 billion. No, I'm not talking. That is the term of the earth. You've been deceived and convinced of how much you can have. How much money is on the earth. There is this much trillions and trillions of amounts of money. There is a total amount of of money that is on the earth. And the son of man I'm talking about went outside that economy and told the guy, go in and fish. <laughs> go in and fish. Go in and fish. Go in and fish. He asked his disciples, when I sent you, Without, uh, what, did he, what did he call it? Without a strap of a bag and shoes and anything on you. He asked his, his disciples, his disciples, he asked them, did you lack anything? He asked, he, are you a disciple of Jesus? He asked them, when I sent you, did you lack anything? He says, and they said, nothing. We didn't lack nothing when you sent us. Are you sent of the Lord? Are you sent of the Lord? And that's why I say it upon your life in the name of Jesus. You will lack nothing. I was talking with a man of God, a pastor friend of mine. And I told him there is a reason why I don't worry about oh, the multimillionaire buildings we will build. I cannot worry about that. 
It's the least of my worry. I cannot lose sleep. Because of the money the ministry needs to build a vision that the Lord has placed in my spirit. I cannot lose sleep over that. Because I know I am sent of the Lord. You don't get it. He sent me. I am persuaded. You don't even need to believe me. Because I have enough witness in my spirit. He says my spirit, my conscience bears witness with the Holy Ghost. That is the primary place of my affirmation. He speaks of them which desire to be teachers of the law. Not knowing what they say, neither from whence they affirm. I carry an affirmation. I am speaking from somewhere. I have a backup of heaven itself. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. I shall not lack any good thing. Then you find somebody who is a disciple of Jesus, worried that she's 35. Nobody has proposed. You ha- you're di- How can you worry when you know who you are? Oh, they've not proposed. They've not. Oh, an apostle, I'm running out of time. Apostle, oh, oh, oh. which time? How long are you going to live? I'm running out of time. Oh, oh, I'm, I, I don't have this. Oh, I don't have that. You're concentrating on what you don't have. Some of us are overwhelmed by how much we have. <laughs> we walk by faith and not by sight. That is our celebration. That's why the Bible says that we are persuaded of things which accompany. Brethren, we are persuaded. When a man says we are persuaded, God took time to persuade him. He says, we are persuaded of things that accompany our salvation. And those with us speak. We must be preaching things that accompany salvation. Because we are persuaded. Let me tell you something. You can't sit under my ministry and not be a success. Even if, even if you have demons that are, have longer horns. I know what I got. <laughs> I know who is inside me. I know what is working in my spirit. Now, let me give you an example. How many of you, ever since you began to see, to hear this message, your finances increased? Put up your hand straight. Ah. Look. No, put up again. Ah. Look. You can't be broke. How many of you, from the time you heard this word, your health bolstered up? Ah. Ah. How many of you started seeing signs, miracles, and wonders from the time? Ah! Maraka talanda rekesh. Zire korando riba zale. That is why I don't worry about you. There is no part of me that can lose sleep and appetite because of you. I don't care what you're going through. Woman, there is not, you see, many people are still stuck in Arakeli songs. They are seeing lights at the end of the tunnel. Some of us, we don't need the end of the tunnel to see the light. Hallelujah. We are the light of the world. We are the city on the hill. I don't need to go to the end to see. Even here, I see light. That is why some of you come off as proud people. Why? Because you don't have too much, but you walk like you have. That is the truth you have. You speak boastfully. Oh, now make it. Who, what, who do you think you are? And I like it when they ask you, who do you think you are? Look at you speaking. Who do you think you are? The moment they start mentioning that, I tell them, hey, you didn't know. Okay, let me help you. I am Rinda Rabazobe Sarabaka Sinte Rinda Rule Lorobosa Prandirere Cosetele Makatalaba Zirante Ho Karale Zire Rebosente Zira. What do you mean? Okay, I meant that I am Ranto Zibalaka Shirere Zo Pandehe Ra. I'm trying to tell you. No amount of words can describe me. 
ah, wait, wait. How do you describe a man? Huh? No, you tell me. How do they describe you? A man eh? who bloweth where he listeth. How do they describe a person? Do you know what it means to blow where you list? In other words, you do whatever you want to do and you do it so well because you have the ability to. How do you describe somebody? Let me tell you. Even if right now, tomorrow morning, I go to pancakes and I sat on Ginger Road, I would make a hundred million shillings. If I choose. Because that's who I am. And if I am, I'm not sorry. No. I wish I was. Sometimes I feel like I want to be, but I can't. No. He says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. In other words, where it chooses. Do you want to go in construction? Blow there and blow the world. Do you want to go in, in what? Oil? Blow there and blow the world. Do you want to go in agriculture? Blow there and blow the world. Me, I chose preaching. And I'm blowing the world, brother. <laughs> Listen, don't be deceived. Nothing can stop Rubega Grace. Again, I know from where I have come from. I know who I have believed. And I know what he spoke to me when I was eight. This is older than your definition, your conclusion about... Some of you, you must understand from which rock you were hewn. You see, that's what the Bible says. He says, forget not the rock from which you were hewn. This rock is Jesus. You are part and lot of the Christ, the Son of God. When you open my DNA up, Jesus starts dripping. <laughs> you, you can say it also for yourself. Or you can stay human. No, he says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell from whence it cometh. Let me explain that in plain English. They are seeing results, but they can't explain. <laughs> One time some guy asked me, Government, <laughs> oh, let me translate for my people. <laughs> he said, you guys of Fanero, where do you get money from? And I love that he said, you guys. That is plural. Are you hearing me? He says, you know it's not where it cometh and where it goes. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, nobody can explain your success or how far you're going to go. Kakati, how can I tell you who I am when I can't explain to you how deep I come and how far I'm going to go? That is what they call being unpredictable. One time, one time, I'll, I'll tell you this. One time, I woke up, and some old guy had written things about me on social media. He was very old. You understand what I'm saying? And I said, a man at that age, I can't talk. You can't fight a father. You can't. You understand? There, when you're a son, you just be wrong. And wait for the vindication of the elect. You get my point. I can't fight someone older than I can't. You not when an old person speaks about me. Of course, people of my age and lower, those ones I pray for them, I can try to but I even those ones I don't. Much worse, you should never attack someone older than you. Never do it. They might speak evil about you. It is true. Let them speak. You just continue. And so yeah, that's the truth. If I can't attack even people lower, how about a guy high? Older. And that one is even worse. You get my point? At least there might be an excuse. But you can't attack a person older than you. So, of course, that's why when we hear people who are older than us speaking about us, when I look at your age and you're older, if you're my age, maybe I can try to talk to you. What? But if you're older, I just pray. Now, this guy is doing funny things. And then God sends me a word of revelation. Oh, it blew me. 
He told me this. He told me. The people attacking, this guy writing about you, he's writing because he's spectating. You get my point? And they don't spectate men without results. So you're running. Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now I'm talking to you people who people talk about. You understand? Somebody raises up in the morning, they start taking their words on you. That woman, she's this. She doesn't even eat cucumber and the watermelon and carrots. I know her. Last week she refused to eat meat. You see. But listen. By the time somebody speaks about you, it means they have taken time to spectate. Now, I'm like a runner. Hallelujah. I, I'm on my tracks. Get set. Go. And I'm running so fast. And the spectator is watching and criticizing. And God told me, just run faster. You have no business stopping by to tell a spectator, you, why are you talking about Bambi, brother? There's a reason why you're on the line and the man is spectating. Oh! Some of you are criticized. And you don't know it's because you have spectators. Oh, have we not a crowd of witnesses? <laughs> Praise God. Never stop your truck to answer spectator. <laughs> Never stop your truck to answer a spectator. Never do it. Let the spectator spectate. You just continue running. That's why the more they speak, the deeper we preach. The more they speak, the deeper we preach. The more they speak, the deeper we preach. I was taken aback one time when I started going to campus ministry. And three times they called police on me. Three times. I'm preaching and police guys come. They start rounding us up. Oh, what are you doing? Three times. Do you know, sir, there are some scriptures we read in the Bible. And until you... Test it. You can never understand it. How many of you have heard of that scripture where he says, and you shall look back at your enemies and you shall not see them? The other day I was preaching in Makerere University and I looked at the list of those people and I, Bambi, I don't see them. They will disappear from your sight. And they are not going to disappear because they walked away. No. They are going to disappear because you ran away. But you just continued to hurt. <laughs> <Woo-wee! laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Now, listen. Moses has a brother called Aaron. Aaron is the priest. Okay? I want to give you a simple analogy. The priest Aaron, actually the Hebrew translation... For Aaron is the one that bringeth light. He that bringeth light. He that bringeth light, Aaron, is the father of Eliezer. Huh? Isn't it? And some of you know very well that they go up on the mountain Hor, H-O-R, and then Aaron dies there. And when he dies there, they get the garment of Aaron. Because when it was taken off him, the man died immediately. Isn't it? And when he removed the garment of him, Moses removed the garment of Aaron because he died. And, and this is funny, that Aaron was kept by the garment. Because the judgment of speaking against Moses stayed. You remember the time him and Miriam, where Miriam catches leprosy? And Aaron stays with the garment. And then they entreat the Lord that the Lord would heal Miriam. Aaron was not judged because he had a garment upon his life. He had a mantle. He had a certain anointing. Are you hearing me? But that did not reflect the inner state of his life. It was not safe. He was safe because of the mantle. So, Aaron is the father of Eliezer, right? So they remove the garment of him and immediately Aaron drops dead. 
right? And then they anoint Eliezer, the son of Aaron, in the place of Aaron. In Exodus 20, the scriptures tell us very clearly that anointing, right? And, but there is a scripture that speaks of the possession of Eliezer as his portion. He speaks of, he held the oil for the light. Aaron represents the bringer of light. Eliezer holds the oil for the light. In other words, he, he's a stimulant. He's the, he's the reason for the light. And he's the son that takes after Aaron and takes on that garment, right? And Eliezer, the Hebrew word there, is Eliezer, translates as the Lord God has helped. Not he will help. Not he might help. Not he could help. He has helped. Now I want to show you the part we have to lift. Okay? If the bringer of light begets he that holds the anointing, yes, it's Numbers 4.16, beholds he that holds the oil for the light. Do you understand? He that holds the anointing that bringeth the light, he that bringeth the light begat he that has the anointing of the light, and he that has the anointing of the light carries this record that the Lord has helped. Oh, in other words, the core place of the anointing that works in the children of light carries the solemn and sacred testimony that it's not about what God is going to do, but what he has done already and that he has helped you. There is nothing you're believing God for that is not already done. There is nothing you're asking that is not already there. There is nothing you're interceding for that has not been given. He said you have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. He says you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Everything you have believed God for, it has already been given. There is nothing that you're believing God for. Now, the anointing is stirred into the light when a man understands what the Lord has done. You used to sing songs. Huh? You remember the song? You say, let the weak, you remember that song? Say, I am strong. You hear? Let the poor say, I am rich. Huh? Let the blind say, I can see. What does that mean? Like it's what the Lord has done for me, not will do. Not will do. He has done it. I wish you understand that. I wish you understand that. The possessor of the oil for the light that was brought by Aaron has one witness. The Lord has helped you. He has helped you. You might be going through the worst situation in the world, but I have good news for you. He has helped you. He has fixed it. You might be sick. Let me tell you this. You were healed. You might be having a financial issue. I have good news for you. He has made a way for you already. You might be struggling with many things in your life and you don't even have definitions for them. I have good news for you. He has fixed it. But I don't see it also in my life. You don't need to see. That's the issue. That's the beginning of spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not when we speak things to see them because we don't have them. No. Spiritual warfare is when we continue maintaining our confession and staying steadfast and confident that we already have all those things that the Lord has spoken upon us. You don't wake up and ask for a man. You wake up and thank God for a man. You don't wake up and ask for a job. You wake up and thank God for a job. You don't wake up and ask God for the anointing. You wake up every morning and thank Him for that. That's the power of thanksgiving. You understand what I'm saying? That's the power of what? Thanksgiving. It carries a certain anointing. It carries a certain anointing. 
For example, if I say, Father, I thank you right now because your touch has spoken it. The anointing of the Holy Spirit has come upon her. I didn't lay hands on her. That, you see, the, the word, when the Bible says the word of God is quick and active, it does not work without the revelation of speaking forth the finished work. I didn't need to lay hands on her. I didn't say, Lord, touch her. I said, I thank you because you have touched or are touching. Me thanking him means that I have stead and sure confidence in him that there is no way he would not touch her. All that I've put it in my spirit and already confirmed in my spirit that what I have spoken was already established eternally. I don't make mistakes. Those are for babies. When I'm on the altar, I speak as the oracle of God. You understand what I'm saying? I have been tested to the end of all perfection and I've beheld the word of God which is broader. I went to the end of things and I know how it feels like to minister in that pattern. I'm a patterned minister. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you the truth. That's the maturity that qualifies the anointing on my life. Wherewith when I speak, it has to work. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has to work. When I tell you, that same anointing, when I tell you and I say, I thank God that he has prospered you. Some of you don't know that I'm not just speaking. It has taken effect now. It has taken effect. You might believe it. And you know, it's going to work for another man. And for another, it might not work. Not because I don't have power in my words. No. No. But because you don't understand how the word works. If you're sick, and I say in the name of Jesus, you were healed. Right now, healing has taken place. In fact, right now, whether you're crippled, if you have a clutch, whether you're deaf, whether you're blind, right now it is happening. People are getting jobs now. I've spoken, I've declared it. He says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. There is somebody with hepatitis B. So the doctor said. Where is the young man with hepatitis? You're the one. Give me your hand. You're healed. You're healed. In the name of Jesus. That is how we cancel wrong testimonies. I decree by the same anointing that any record... And report upon your life that is false. It is cancelled. By reason of the anointing in the name of Jesus. Some of you. Your name. Has been misrepresented in the other realm. In the world. You don't see. And therefore it has taken another course. Of the things in the life you see. That is why you're walking without favor. You're walking, re- you know, rejected. You're walking. Tonight, by reason of the anointing, it changes. It changes. It changes. I see favor falling on you as the dew that precedes manna. And I'm not talking about just the manna of the Old Testament dispensation. I'm talking of the manna of Revelation chapter 2. Where he says, I shall give thee of the hidden manna. The things that men have not seen. Listen, some of you are walking in graces. And I want you to receive this. That nobody in your family has ever seen. Nobody in your father's lineage has ever taken. Nobody related to you from the beginning of the world up to now has ever comprehended. Don't worry, the anointing is much. But that's how God changes things. May God change the course of your life. May what seemed like a curse become blessing. May you find favor in uncommon places. May people who don't even know you favor you beyond your wildest dreams in the name of Jesus. May you live long and not die. I don't care what the doctor said is in your blood. Listen. Listen. A few years ago, I entered intensive care 
and there was a woman who was clinically pronounced dead and they were just planning to get out her body and take it for burial the husband had prepared and even Doug told the guys to start digging and cleaning where they were going to bury this woman and I remember walking into intensive care and the Lord told me if you only call upon her spirit back into that body she will leave and I remember calling this woman and I say, Charity, I know you're hearing me and you're up there. Come back to your body by reason of the anointing. That is the anointing that connected that woman back to her body and she lived. That is who we are. Tell somebody that is who we are. We are givers of life because the one that has life is inside us. Even Jesus. That same spirit is the one by which I speak upon you and say whatever has died in your life it lives again in the name of Jesus listen some of you the Lord literally is rebuilding you again that is what they call beauty from ashes Unless the Lord of Sabaoth comes through and rebukes you, there is no hope. But I have good news for you. God is rebuilding you to a level and place where people are going to look at you and they will not believe what the Lord has done in your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. happening in your life. Speak in English if you can.
Lord and my Heavenly Prince. Clap for God like something has happened in your life. Hey! Oh, I want that lady to come. Bring her here. Lady, say. never given your life to Jesus and you want to receive him this evening I don't want to deny you the opportunity please come now come and stand here now just come and stand here you want to receive Jesus this evening come and stand here come come you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.